Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, so last last week we began this. Um, well, two weeks ago, we began this beautiful teaching. For me, it completely communicates the the will of God. All right, it it reveals to us God's will, and and the amazing part of it is that it, it changes it changes our interpretation of things. It changes how we view miracles, and and I want you to take note of this, please. This teaching changes how we view miracles. This teaching changes how we view God's timing. And I'm going to focus a bit on that today. Okay. It changes how we view miracles. It changes how we view timing. Please understand that God is sovereign. God remains sovereign. But please notice this. In his sovereignty, he has empowered man. In his sovereignty, he has given dominion to man. Genesis in chapter 1. God said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. Let them have dominion. Please understand that. Let them have dominion. So it's God's will for man to have dominion. And it's God's will. It, it, it thrills the heart of God when men exercise that dominion. So maybe I need to repeat that again. It is number one, God's will for us to have dominion. But then it thrills his heart when we exercise this dominion, obviously in accordance with his will, but God wants us to exercise it, you know, but somehow we have, um, we've been kind of like taught otherwise. So we just say, well, I am waiting for God's time. There are certain things where we are to wait on him. And there are certain times where we are to wait for him, but then we have to be sure we're not waiting when we, are not supposed to and then we're not acting when we should be waiting so that's now where the wisdom comes in and someone said that wisdom is a right application of knowledge so it's important to have knowledge but then you need wisdom so that you know how to now rightly apply all of the knowledge that you have gathered so i say again you know we have to be sure not to be waiting when we should be acting and then we should now not be acting when we should be waiting in exodus chapter 14 you know they were out of Egypt, but still at the Red Sea. Red Sea in front of them, wilderness all around them, Pharaoh behind them. And, and Moses, you know, let, let, let's, let's see that place. You know, Exodus 14, could just pick the, you know, 14th verse, in Exodus 14 and, and 14. You just, um, so I'll pick a few instances just to explain this thing, you know, so we get it. You know, God has given us dominion. God has given to us power. And God says, use it, go ahead and use it. But then we, we want to be sure, we, we want to be um, certain. We, we don't want to make any mess, you know? And then, I mean, we, we use that statement uh, that Moses said, and we say it a whole lot. I mean, the Lord will fight for you, you know, and you're going to hold your peace. Moses said it, and this is true. God does fight and then you hold your peace. So he said, the Lord will fight for you and you hold your peace. Verse 15 now, please, of Exodus you know, 14. And the Lord said to Moses, and I want you to see that. So we quote verse 14, but we need to see how God now responded. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. So we quote verse 14 and say, oh, God will fight. And you find many Christians standing and waiting and saying, well, God will fight, God will fight, God will fight. But God like a game of chess, like a game of what now, cards, you know, like there are two moves, all right? You make a move and then the other player makes a move. So very many times there are certain moves that God has already made. And God is saying, listen, it's your move. The next face is your move. The next thing is your move. Once again, wisdom is needed. And that was a kind of wisdom that Moses was able to apply here, okay, or technically, I mean, him able to, being able to hear God's voice rescued him in this case. And the Lord said, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. And then we'll, we'll see the 16th verse. It's a story we all know, but we need to just see. You know, but God now started telling him, listen, use your dominion, use your authority. Lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. 
and the children of Israel will go on dry land through the midst of the sea. So it's like someone, you know, I mean, Moses would have not, oh, as in th this stick can still do something more. I mean, he's used it a whole lot in Egypt, turned to snake and all of that. But God is saying, hey, the stick is not done doing his job. Lift up your rod, stretch it over the sea, and it will divide. So God said, Moses, you are the one dividing the sea, not me. So while Moses was being saying, well, you know, guys, God's going to do something. God's going to do something. Maybe, you know, strong wind blowing away the chariots and, you know, the horsemen. And all God says, no, you, number one, speak, go forward. You know, number two, stretch forth your word and divide. Use your authority. And, and we need to get that. We need to see that. All right. We go to Matthew, Matthew 8 from verse 1. I, I like I like Matthew 8 uh, because it, it's, for me, um, always just displays the will of God when it comes to health and healing. All right. At least a first couple of verses in Matthew chapter 8. And when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 2. Um, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. If you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus, so the, the leper is asking, I mean, if, if you're willing, you're going to make me clean, all right? Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So this man, to get healed, came to see Jesus, and then he came to ask, can you do something about my case? And Jesus said, sure. And he lays hands on him, and he receives. Now, yeah, please, let's, let's go on. Verse 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So in the fourth verse now, Jesus um, said to him, see that you tell no one, go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer the gifts that Moses commanded, commanded as a testimony. Verse five now, thank you, Lord Jesus. And when Jesus had entered into Capernaum, a centurion came to him. So I want you to notice. So first of all, the leper, all right, the leprous man came to him and said, if you're willing, make me clean. So Jesus touches him and says, I will definitely be clean. Now, a leper, Jesus entered Capernaum and a centurion came to him, pleading with him. All right, verse six, please. You know, pleading with him and saying to him, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. My daughter is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said, hey, no problem. I'm going to come and heal him. And then conversation continues, verse eight. So I want you to follow this. I'm building a point. And the centurion said to him, Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof but only speak the word and my servant to be healed. So remember again, the leper came to him. Can you help me? Can you do something about my case? Just said, sure, sure, sure. Put his hands on him, heals him of leprosy. I mean, big stuff, right? Heals him of leprosy. Now someone is sick at home. And if you remember the case of Jairus' daughter, the man said, hey, come to my house. My daughter is dying. Jesus said, no problem. So Jesus did oblige everybody. Let's, let's go to the 14th verse now of this same Matthew chapter 8. Verse 14, and when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever, all right, verse 15, and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and she served him, okay? So he was that, and then when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and cast out of spirits with his word and he healed, not some, not, not a few, not most, he healed all who we're sick. I really love Matthew 8. It's one of those areas where, you know, when, when your mind keeps going, will I get healed? Will this case get better? And all of that. You can just go to Matthew chapter 8 and read. And, you know, yeah, the devil might want to tell you the religious thinking might say, well, this was when Jesus was on the earth. But then you remind yourself of Hebrews chapter 8, and I mean, 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. So if he healed, then he's in the healing business till forever. Okay. So Bible said he cast out spirits with, with the word and he healed all who were sick. Verse 17 now, I, I, I love verse 17. That he might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Please understand again where I'm coming from. I said many times we could hold on and say, I'm waiting for God's time. And there is a time and place for that. We just need to know when, all right? We could also say, I'm, I'm waiting for the manifestation. I'm waiting for God, God to do something about it. There's a time and place for that. But if we put that and apply it on every case, we're going to get into trouble. We're going to keep waiting on God for miracles, for testimonies, for manifestations, and nothing is going to happen. Please understand that. Nothing is going to happen. All right. And I said before I say it again, we, we understand that God is sovereign. But 
in the sovereignty of God, he has handed certain things to men, certain levels of authority, certain levels of command, such that if you sit back and say, well, um, God's time is the best, uh, God will do it when God will do it, you know, and we need to be careful, even when we quote Romans 8, and we say all things work together for good. Um, it's not a general statement. Let's let's travel there and then I'll, I'll connect all of us. So Romans 8 and then the 28th verse of it. You know, Romans 8, 28. So because we, we, we now know it, it's become um, church lingua, uh, you know, like when you say it is well and all of that, you know, and then we kind of like even say to a non-believer, it is well, all is well, you know, so it's become lingua. But when we use it, we need to know when we use that just mere lingua, all right? But then we need to know when exactly to use it. Um, we can't assure a non-believer all is well. What Isaiah said is say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. So I can tell a believer all will be well with you. But I, I, by authority of scripture, I can't tell an unbeliever all will be well. I, I don't have the assurance to do that. Same for this. Um, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So it connects somewhat of a clause here, all right? Those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Now, we could say, well, um, if you don't love God, you know, but the love God there somewhat is generic in the state sense of he's referring to the church of Jesus Christ, referring to the saints, because they are the ones called. They didn't call themselves. You didn't call yourself. I didn't call myself. So we're called according to his purpose. So within that statement or context, and then it's easy to say all things work together for good. But we need to back up. Let's go to the 26th verse. All right. Because we could back up further and further and further. All right. Um, let's, let's go to 24. We could back up. You know, we could back up further. We could back up from like 18, 19. And pull it down the whole what is waiting for. <laughs> All right. Um, quite some backup. It says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed. So he's talking to the church, he's talking to believers. All right. Um, so we'll just try and read, read up quickly. Let's let's go. 19. The earnest expectation of the creature waits for the revealing of the sons of God. All of us, sons of God, all right. For the creature was subjected in futility. Not willingly, the curse, everything that happened in Genesis that we've talked about in church, but because of him who subjected it in hope, 21, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the son. So when the church is revealed, all right, glory of Christ revealed in the church, it will affect the whole world. That's what he's saying here. It will affect, you know, creation and everything. Like 20, 22 now. Watch this. It now says, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors in birth pains together until now. All right. Um, not only that, but we also, all right, who have the first fruits of the spirit. So we, the believers, who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption. That is the redemption. You know, when we're going to change this body. Okay. 24 now says, watch this. For we are saved in this hope. We're looking forward to something. We're saved in this hope. But hope that is sin is not hope. For why does someone still hope for something that he already sees? So you don't hope for something you see. When you already see it, you don't hope for it, right? So 25. But if we hope for what we don't see, then we wait for it, how? With perseverance. We wait for it with patience. I don't see it. I don't see all the, you know, there are certain things God promised, like health and all of that. You must see them now. But things like Jesus is coming. You can't say, I believe I see Jesus coming tomorrow morning. That is outside our realm of, I can pull it in by faith down. We wait patiently for it. So hope that is in, we wait for it, all right? So it now connects to 26. Likewise, in the same way, likewise means in the same way, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we know not what we should pray for the way we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercessions with groanings that cannot be uttered. So there are things we want to pray for. We don't know exactly how to go about praying for them. There are even things that are beyond words. But the spirit will provide groanings for us to pray about those things because they need to be prayed about. All right. 27. Now he who searches the heart knows what his mind of spirit is. Why? Because the spirit will make intercessions for the saints. How? According to the will of God. Then we go to 28. And 
we know that all things work together for good. So it's not a standalone verse. It's not a loosely um, to be applied kind of verse where everything works together for good. And then we say that nothing works together for good for the person, you know, the person is not intentionally keen in with the purposes of God. The person is not intentionally. Uh, now, sometimes it's not the things are even working together for you good because you prayed. But the Holy Ghost had someone pray or intercede for you or on your behalf somewhere, supplicate for you because you're a believer now. You know, the Holy Ghost made some of those things happen. Things would have to align for your good. Please understand this. I'm, I'm saying, you know, while we could use the verse and say, well, all things work together for good. If a person doesn't change his or her confession, if a person keeps saying the wrong thing, nothing's going to work together for good. The person is making the thing work against, you know, you know, the person, you know, making it work for evil, if I'll say that. So there is an alignment. That's that's what I'm saying. But because we know the word, we know how to pray in the spirit, we know how to yield to the leading of the spirit, then we are in line. We're, we're rolling with, you know, the direction of the verse. Why? Look at 29. So called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, all of us, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of the son of God or his son, that he might be firstborn amongst many brethren. So at the end of it all, the work of God in all of our lives is a confirmation. We need to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's the purpose of God. I know sometimes we say, okay, what's someone's purpose? And they say, this is my purpose, this is my calling, this is my calling. Our highest calling, our highest assignment is to be conformed into the image of his son, all right? God has called us into fellowship. God gives us assignments and ministries and all of that. But our highest assignment, our highest, even that fellowship is in order to fulfill this, okay? Paul in Philippians chapter three was saying, all right, that I may lay hold on the high call of God that is in Christ. And what's that high call? Conforming to his image, conforming to his image. So whatever it is we do, whatever it is we're called to do, so in, in a bid to fulfill this, and then we yield to the leadings of the spirit, we yield to the word of God, things easier and more easily will definitely work together for your good. If you understand what I'm trying to explain. Now, I went into all that to explain the issue of sovereignty. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Now, but within his own sovereignty, he has given power to man. He's given authority to man. And, and I want you to get this. I trust you're getting this. So there are certain things God expects you to take charge over. There are certain things God expects you to dominate. If everything was just in the sovereignty of God, Proverbs 18, verse 20, please. Proverbs 18, 20. I mean, when you see the verse, in case you don't know where we're going, you'll be like, oh, I know that verse, <laughs> you know? So Proverbs 18, 18, and then the 20th chapter of Proverbs. Watch this. It says, a man's stomach, shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. With the produce of his lips, it will be filled. So God is saying, if you want to live a satisfactory life, use your mouth. So what are we learning? Mouth, mind, manifestation, or mind, mouth, manifestation. All right. If you want to live, so if you keep saying, I hope it will happen, hoping is not you using your mouth correctly. All right. Hoping, we're going to see the next verse. You know the next verse more than this. In case you don't know this one, you know the next one. All right. A man's stomach will be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, all right? Are you satisfied yet? I don't think so. Neither am I. So let's keep using our mouths, okay? Let's keep using our mouths. Let's keep using our mouths. It is better to say nothing than to say the wrong thing. Did you get that? So it's better to be quiet, all right, than to say it's not working, it's getting worse. It's better to say nothing than to say the wrong thing. But it's far better to say the right thing, to give a command, to use your mouth. It's better to give authority, give, I mean, give instructions, give a command of faith than to say nothing. Did you get that? A man's stomach could be satisfied. How satisfactory do you want your life to be in 2022? We can't say, well, I'm looking onto God. No, God is looking onto you and saying, I have written it in the Bible. A man's stomach could be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and from the produce of his lips, he will be filled. So speak, keep, keep speaking. How do you become satisfied? You eat, and then 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 you eat. Did you, did you get that? So because we say to someone, all things work together for your good. 
all things are together for good. But the thing is not working because the person is going against the working together for good. All right, he or she is talking against it, praying against it, thinking against it. If we keep doing that, it won't work together for good. And then we've had to say this year will be a great year. We've had many prophecies that did not come to pass. The mouth and the mind are major keys to the manifestation. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, with the produce of his lips, he will be filled. Now let's see 2021. You know that one, like, right. Death and life are where? In the power of the tongue, those who love it, they will eat the fruit thereof. Did you get that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Where? Mouth. Did you get that? Mouth. So if I speak, am I speaking life? Am I speaking death? Oh, but I'm only trying to describe how bad things are. They did that in Numbers 23, I mean, Numbers 13, and God said that's an evil report. You remember the 10 spies, all right, out of 12 that said, we're not able to go. The giants are there, the sons of Anak. I mean, it, it's a bad deal. We can go. And God said, that's an evil report, all right? Do, do you know? It was never the will of God that he spent 40 years in the wilderness. No, you know, so we need to be careful. I know we talk about wilderness experience. And what we mean by that is the fact that, you know, God could put you in some sort of obscurity and then you get trained in the backside of the desert or backside, you know, where nobody knows you like David, right? He was tending over sheep. And then while tending over sheep, lion came, bear came. And those were like training faces for him. Then suddenly there was a Goliath and he goes, oh, I'll deal with this guy. God's helped me before God helped me again. Yes, I know. I understand that. So we get to say, well, wilderness experience. I'm in the wilderness. Then we'll connect to Jesus, 40 days fast, connect to John the Baptist, and then we'll connect, connect, and we'll build a solid teaching on wilderness experience from there. But the wilderness for the children of Israel was a death sentence. Please understand. The wilderness was a death sentence. Wilderness was not the will of God. And wilderness was not a training ground for them. These people said, you brought us here to kill us. And God said, Numbers 14, verse 28. Num Numbers 14, 28. All right, Numbers 14. So you remember from Numbers 13, the conversation began. All right, Caleb and Joshua tore their clothes. All right, and said, hey, guys, come on. God said, we're going to do it. So we're well able. Let's go, let's go. And the rest of the guys, you know, we're, we're like saying a whole lot of bad stuff. And they talked and talked until God said, say to them, as I live, <laughs> says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so am I going to do. They said, you want to kill us? Okay, so now you're going to die. All right? And that was when God said, 20 years and above, listen, you are not entering our promised land. You guys will die here. So they kept going around. They had to keep going around until everybody was dead. Do you understand? So wilderness experience in their case wasn't a training phase. So be careful what we've picked these languages, you know, and then we get to say them and say them and say them and say them. And, say them and... is this clear, please? All right. Um, please let me know if it's clear. You might want to, you know, um, but we could just pick from 13 because of time won't be able to do that. But read 13, read 14, sit with it and read it. Wilderness for them was death, was a death sentence. All right, I got a thumbs up there. Thank you. I, I believe it's clear. All right. You know, it was a death sentence. So be careful what you say. Oh, I'm going through stuff. At God's time, he will get me out. He will get, no, God said death and life are in the power of your tongue. Start driving yourself forward. Start making the move. Start talking your way forward. You know, now, 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 um, there's nothing wrong in saying by God's grace, all right? There's nothing wrong in saying a whole lot of that. But sometimes it's not a faith statement, all right? Sometimes it's not a faith statement. Sometimes it's just um, church language again, all right? You know, church language. When Jesus told the disciples, let us go over to the other side, he didn't say let's go over to the other side by God's grace. Um, please understand, I'm not knocking. I'm, not, I'm just trying to explain. Um, when, when you want to use it, use it as a faith language. I believe I'll get that thing done by the grace of God. You're saying it as a faith statement, you know. Sometimes I tell someone, uh, would you be at that meeting tomorrow? By God's grace, it, it sounds like maybe, maybe not. Hopefully, maybe so, maybe not so. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's see how it turns out. Do you desire to be there? Do you want to be there? Is it a faith project? Is it something you're going for? I mean, Paul in Philippians chapter 4, 
all right, the 13th verse said, I can do all things. How, guys? Through Christ who strengthens me. Some versions say, which strengthens me? I can do. Thank you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He said it. He is not, um, you know, maybe by God's grace, I might, I might not. No, 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 no. All right. Even when he said um, 1 Corinthians chapter um, 15, right? 15, I believe it is. And then the 10th verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Thank you. Great. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Watch, please. I want you to follow the language here. It's not a hopeful, I'm hoping, I'm, mm -mm. It's, it's a strong statement. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. Meaning I used that thing, I maximized it, all right? I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Anybody getting this? So they say, oh, do you think I finished that project? By the grace of God, by the grace of God. We sound humble about it. No, it was a strong statement for Paul. Do you think you finish? Oh, sure, I'll get it done. I'm going to get it done by God's grace. It's a faith statement. It's a faith statement, you know? But once again, you know, the same way, like I just talked about the wilderness experience, you know, it's just my wilderness experience. God is training me. Wilderness for those guys was a death sentence. They were all going to die except for Joshua and Caleb because they said God brought them to the wilderness. They killed them, all right? you know, for you, um, I mean, there are many languages we use in the church, and I feel we, we need to be careful, uh, we talk a lot about brokenness, God has to break you, break you, break you, break you, break you, I, I personally feel most people don't understand the concept of it, and then we try to peek from David and say broken and a contrite heart, and all of that, and all of that, traveling to the New Testament, you would not find brokenness, you, you, we need to be careful, with these things just import, we just import them, and say, well, God has to break me and mold me. And God wants to lead you by his spirit. He doesn't want to break you, <laughs> all right? He might need to break you if you're stubborn, if you're, do, do you understand that? So God is not interested in, you know, breaking and breaking and breaking and breaking. Do, do you understand this, please? So I'm, I'm explaining, and you need to get this. When God said, you know, um, I, I think that's clear, okay? Wilderness experience is not, for the Israelites, was a death sentence. It was God saying to them, you're going to die here because he said, I want to kill you, so you're going to die. We've seen the verse in Numbers, all right, um, 14. So mind language, mind the language. So when you say, oh, by the grace of God, uh, by the, we're trying to sound humble, but let's read this verse one more time and then leave it alone. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. This is not a humble, I'm trying to sound humble. He's bragging about the grace of God. Come on, did anybody hear the way I put it? Paul was bragging about the grace of God. Read, could you read with me? Hope you don't mind. Let's do it together. I want to go. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than the rest of them, yet not I but the grace of God was with me. This is a brag. It's a brag about the grace of God, not on his ability, not on his CV or resume. No, he was bragging on God's grace. So child of God, brag about the grace of God. I'm going to get that thing done. Brag about the grace of God. I'm going to make that project successful. Brag about the grace of God. Paul, again, like we saw earlier, Philippians 4, 13, I can do how many things? All things through Christ who strengthens me. So brag about the grace of God. We're not being humble when we talk about the grace like we're not sure if grace is effective. We're not being humble when we talk about grace like we're not sure if grace is sufficient. No, brag about it. Brag about it, all right? In fact, Jesus said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. Do you understand that? How did we get into this? We're talking about the fact that God is sovereign, okay? God in his sovereignty has given authority to man. Did you get that? God is sovereign. God in his sovereignty has given authority to man. We mentioned how that in, well, we read Matthew chapter eight, the leper met Jesus and then said, sir, do something about my case. Can you, will you? And Jesus healed the leper. All right. So we seem, we say a case where someone took permission from Jesus Christ. And then we see again, same Matthew eight that we read, the centurion, my servant needs healing. Jesus said, I'll come. He says, no, just say something. He needed permission. God, Jesus, to use his authority and his faith. 
we got down in St. Matthew 8, Peter's mother-in-law wasn't feeling well, Jesus healed her. In the evening, they brought a whole lot of people and healed everyone. Then I would start going, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh. You know, and then um, I'm not knocking, um, but sometimes, like I said, we've picked a lot of language and lingua, you know, um, I'm, I'm not knocking, but I do not subscribe scripturally, right? Um, like I said, we keep saying, well, I'm waiting for God. God's time is the best. God is sovereign. There's a time to wait on God. There's a time to say, no, God himself is waiting on me. Use your authority. You can't be sick in your body or your baby sick or something around and you say, we're waiting on God. We're, no, 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 no. You use your authority. You use your authority. Did you get that? And then we say, um, you know, pass, pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. When on others you are calling, do not pass me by. That, that's not a song for you to sing, all right? Stay with me. And I know um, if you know me a little bit, you know there is a verse. There is a verse for everything. There's a verse. I endeavor to give you at least one verse for it. And then there's a New Testament understanding about it, all right? About, there's a New Testament understanding. But don't forget this. We've dealt with that. There's a time to wait on him. Moses said, we saw that Numbers 14. Let, let's read that Numbers 14 again. Numbers 14, from just read 14 and then 15. Did I say Numbers? Exodus. Exodus 14. All right, 14, 14. And then we'll see 14, 14 and 15. But don't forget this. Brag about the grace of God. So look at Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you and he will hold your peace. And then we say that to people. Hey, God will fight for you. Amen, 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 amen. But God's response to David wasn't, oh, yeah, everybody step back. The response of God here is different from the response of God in 2 Chronicles, in the battle King Jehoshaphat faced. The, so you need to know what is the wisdom of God for the case. Lord, if I do hold your peace. Amen. God now says, verse 15 again. And the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell him to go forward. And then in 16th verse, you stretch your rod over that thing and you divide it. You divide it. Don't, so don't wait for me to blow one wind again and do something. You make a move. I've made my first move. You make your move. Then I make the next move. Did you get that? So like it's, it's a game of chess. Your mouth has a lot to do with your manifestation. We're teaching mouth, mind, manifestation. You could get the last two uh, teachings really, really solid. Your mouth, what's happening in your mouth? What are you uttering with the words of your mouth? Tell them to go forward. Tell them to go forward. You told them I'll do something. You say something now. Did you get that? Now, Mark chapter 5 from verse 25. We saw it last week. We need to see it again today within this context. Mark 5, 25. So you say, oh, um, don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I want to say, even if he's passing you by, which he's not. Listen, now he's not passing. All right, we've borrowed the whole of maybe Blind Martinius' story and everything and, you know, made good songs from him. I know, right? Okay. But greater is he that is in you. You are the temple of God. So nobody's passing by anymore. The person passing now lives inside you, okay? Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. All right, um, let's keep going, please. So a certain woman had a flow of blood 12 years. She had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent everything she had she didn't get better. So she's seen doctors. She spent all that money. She broke. Another thing about this, like I pointed last week, is the fact that nobody could live around this woman anymore. Why? Under the law of Moses, she's unclean. So anybody who comes to her is unclean. All right. Back then, and that's why you find some churches wrongly interpreting scripture and saying women who are in their monthly period should not come to church because it was in the law of Moses. It's in the law. We don't have a business with that law. I wish you guys were in church last Sunday. I mean, it was uh, for those of you who weren't, but I mean, I, I know I'll sit teach, I'll sit teach a lot of times because we need to get the law out of our mind and see the Bible for what it is, see the New Testament and it happened properly. So this woman being unclean, and even when you're a, a woman is in a monthly circle, according to the law, according to the law, all right, if you touch what she touches, you're, you are also unclean. You're unclean till evening time. Now, she's not experienced something for four days or seven days or it's 12 years. So whoever touches her bed, whoever touches her pot, whoever touches the frying pan, whoever touches the doorknob that she touches, whoever touches anything she touches, the person is unclean. So everybody's just in trouble. Do you understand that? Everybody is in complete trouble. Nobody can stay around her. So she suffered many things from many physicians. She spent everything she had. She didn't get better. She grew worse. 27. It, it gets beautiful. Hallelujah. 
when she heard about Jesus, and I want you to follow this. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. 28 now. Hallelujah. It, it's interesting. For she said, if only I touch his clothes, I will be made well. 29. I'm coming back here, but let's, let's go on. Immediately she touched him, right? The fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And 30, you know, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone on him, turned around and said to the crowd, who touched my clothes? 31. But his apple said to him, you see the module trunk in you and you say, who touched me? <laughs> All right, 32. Oh, thank you, Lord. And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. 33, sneaky, sneaky. We found the woman trying to sneak. But the woman watched this, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened, <laughs> you know, came and fell down before him and told the truth. So she was trying to sneak away. Now, Matthew 8, the leper came to Jesus for permission, for, you know, can you do something about my case? And just say, oh, sure. Centurion, can you do something for me? Oh, oh, sure. Um, Peter's mother-in-law, he healed her. Evening time, they brought a crowd of people. I healed every one of them. This woman did not use any of Jesus' faith to get her healing. I, I want you to see this, please. Please, please, I want you to see this. She didn't come to him and say, lay hands on me. She didn't. You know the story, we just read it. She didn't come to him and say, lay hands on me. She didn't say, Sam, I'm about to touch your clothes. And he said, hmm, there's power, power. Touch it now. Receive the power. Touch it. She came from behind him. She got her healing and she was running home until Jesus got her out. She was sneaking out. She snuck in and she was sneaking out already. What did this woman do? Let's see the next verse, please. All right. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. Now, yeah, talk about lots of other people's faith. But she demonstrated a different kind of faith, showing us I can will to be healed. Did you get that? I can will. I can decide I am getting my healing today, all right? This is what is called schooling yourself into faith. She schooled herself into faith. She, I'm going to get my healing today. 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 She didn't come to even say, Jesus, do you think I'm going to be healed? And you say, oh, sure, come on, take, receive. No, she came and she got it. And he commended her for it. Your faith has made you whole. And they'll find believers lying on their beds, the Holy Spirit living in you, and you say, I I'm just waiting on God. You know, um, I, I know there's pain over my body. I know the doctor said, I know the doctor said, I, I know at God's own time I'm going to get well. It's a, it's, a, it's a sensitive thing to do. It's, it's a dangerous thing to do, especially when it comes to health and healing. Why? God did not promise to heal you. All right? He didn't. It's better, let me just come at it that way. Healing is not a promise. Promise is, I will give you this. I will give it to you. Healing is not a promise. Quickly, um, Isaiah 53, and then the fifth verse, and then we'll quickly compare two verses. I want you to see something. Isaiah chapter 53, and then verse five. You're going to read out loud, if you don't mind. You're going to read out with me. Are you ready? One, two, can we go? But he was what? Wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. All right, let's take the last line. By his stripes, we are healed. One more time, please. By his stripes, we are healed. So we are healed. Did you get that? We are. We are. Isaiah, this is Isaiah looking by the spirit of prophecy and seeing what's happening to Jesus up on the cross and he saves us. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Don't forget the last line here. By his stripes, we are healed. All right. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2 and the 24th verse of it. 1 Peter chapter 2, 24. You, you, see, you see the beauty in um, looking closely into, into the verses. Can we read together now? Let's go. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to saints might live for righteousness read last line go by whose stripes 
you were healed. Did you get that? By whose stripes you were healed. You were right. Now, you say, yeah, but I prayed and told God, you promised to heal me. You heal me now. Heal me in Jesus' name. And then he healed you. Yes, it works. I, I know. But sometimes it doesn't work. Because the devil comes in and says, see, you're not healed yet. Maybe you did something wrong. You know, um, God, God wants you to learn something. And then all those kinds of things can come in, elongate the process, elongate the pain you, we, we shouldn't be going through, reduces our ability to fight the thing. You know, God is doing it. God is doing it. No, Bible makes it clear here. By whose stripes you were healed. Could you say this? I was healed. I was healed. I, I was healed. NLT. I think it's NLT or NIV. Um, that, that I want to change the rendering of for, for the last one. But let's check NL, NLT first. Hallelujah. Let's, let's check NLT. I want you to see. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Watch this. He personally carried away our sins in his own body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. You have been healed by his wounds. You have. Isaiah saw it by the spirit of prophecy, by vision. It's happening. I see. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Cancer was put on him. Arthritis was put on him. Leukemia was put on him. Ovariances was put on him. I mean, multiple sclerosis was put on him. I mean, anything you can name. If you remember the curse of the law, Moses got to a point and said everything that is not even named here. So everything not also named was put on him. So Isaiah saw everything on, on people's bodies, leaving them hanging on him from that cross. Everything, every sickness, you know, down into the future of generations, people not yet born. As I was watching everything, as I goes, oh my goodness, it was wounded for our transgression. It was bruised for our iniquities. Wow, the punishment, seeing being punished and hanging up there. Punishment for our sins was laid on him. By his stripes were healed, my goodness. He's seeing sickness put on him. He's seeing it. Peter didn't need the spirit of prophecy. Did you get that? Peter did not need vision. Peter was, was there, of course. They ran away and then came back and ran away, you know, denied him and all of that. So P Peter, you know, excuse me, I thought that silence is, all right. You know, P Peter was there. Peter was there. Peter was there. Peter was there. Peter was there on the cross. Peter hung on the cross with Jesus Christ. I mean, why am I saying that? Excuse me. <laughs> Peter was there at Calvary watching Jesus hanging on the cross. So Jesus wasn't um, telling Peter, um, so I'm going to do this for you later. No, Peter was there. Peter, now watch this, was there when Jesus resurrected and Jesus would have told them the implication. Do you remember what Isaiah said? Yeah, so that's it, I've done it. I took away sickness and I took away everything. So he would have emboldened them someone to go out and lay hands on the sick and do all kinds of stuff, which they did when he was here. But now they have fulfilled it. Go, go, do more, do more, do more. So Peter says, such as I have to the man, you know, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And Peter gets him off, gets him up. Is this helpful? I have been healed. So that pain, that whatever, tell that thing in the name of Jesus, go out of my life. And if, if you have to keep saying it every day for 10 days, Use your pills, use whatever, do, do, but be committed to the word. Use your authority. Use your authority. Don't say, at God's time, he will heal me. God said, no, I have healed you. The devil knows you have been healed, but the devil is not sure that we know. So he's going to trick us. He's going to deceive us. He's going to try to do that to us. But we're going to use our authority, use our mouth and say, no, in Jesus' name, I walk in my health. Matthew 13 and then the 15th verse. Matthew 13, 15. Matthew 7, 13, 15. You could um, drop your questions at this time. Um, if you want me to, you know, clear something I said tonight. Matthew 15, 13. I want you to see this. For the hearts of his people are hardened and their ears, all right? So their hearts are hardened. Their ears cannot hear and they closed their eyes. So their eyes, watch this, watch this, cannot see, their ears cannot hear, their hearts cannot understand, watch this, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. There are gates, and we won't be able to touch that. I doubt we'll touch that so much today. 
So there are gates. There are gates for any manifestation. I just summarized in the title and said your mouth and your mind, but there are gates. You have your eye gate, please notice. Then you have your ear gate. So your ears are gates, your eyes are gates, and these are gates that lead to your heart. You can program a manifestation by working on these gates. Another gate is your mouth gate. We saw that last week, Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. So if I watch my words, if I watch what I see, if I watch what I hear, I'm reprogramming my heart. Let, let's do um, King James here, please. Regular King James. I'm going to bring out something from the verse. So let's do let regular King James, please. This, thank you. Uh, da, 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 yes, perfect. For these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, all right? Their ears are dull of hearing. Their ears are dull of hearing. They are not, all right? Their eyes, they have closed. Could you see the next um, four words after that? Less at any time. Less. I, I want you to follow this. Less at any time. Follow this, please. When they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I will heal them. Here, just is teaching them how to program their manifestation. If you can see it with your eyes, if you hear with your ears, if you if it gets into your heart, you're gonna get what you're looking for. And this is what you know, self-help teachers, motivational teachers, and all of them, you know, this is what they teach and say, if you can see it, it will happen. If you believe it long enough, it will happen. Cut the picture get a vision board and they teach all of that and people do them and have success stories from all of these things this is bible this is the bible we've done this for like two weeks now you're beginning to see that meditation is scripture meditation is god it's a god-ordained principle how to envision something it is god god created that idea not man not 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 hindus not no this is god watch this again for this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, less at any time. Did you get that? So the work, the work you and I have, and I love the way Hebrews puts it, says you labor in the word. So the labor we have now is reprogramming, 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 reprogramming. Please get last week's video. It's on YouTube. It will help you. We we addressed, and I'm not done with that, but we addressed how God helped Abraham. God told him, look at the stars. God told him that. Then God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. And then he had hundreds of people living in his house. So imagine how many times he might hear the name that day and each day. And then faith comes how, guys? Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So he's going to hear every day. Abraham, Abraham. He's going to say it every time. I am Abraham. What's God doing for him? God is affecting what he's hearing. God is affecting what he's saying. And when you speak words, you hear those words. And when you hear words, they form pictures. When you hear big black dog, big blue ribbon, you, you don't see words. You see pictures. And God is affecting it until that thing produced so we say Abraham waited for a child for 25 years. Um, technically, no, all right? Technically, no. Uh, you have to follow the story and do a breakdown, breakdown. Then we need to now come to when exactly did Abraham release his faith? The way to get the answer is to go to Romans 4 and connect the story in Romans 4, how Paul rendered it, and go back to Genesis. Then you see how exactly was this thing done? It was when, I mean, it was when Abraham... I, Romans 4 said Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. That wasn't referring to Ishmael. I don't think so. So that means as at those other points, Bible wasn't referring to that. Bible started referring to he's not staggering from a particular point of faith. From a particular point of believing. He staggered not at the promise of God. And that was when Abraham was 19 and God said to him, this is what we're going to do. We're going to change your name. And this is what it will make happen. And Abraham began to walk with God on that process. And Sarah conceived. Sarah conceived. Now, talk for, we'll break that down better some other time. But watch this again. For this people's heart is wax gross. 
ears are dull of hearing, their eyes they have closed, less at any time. Please say with me at any time. Say, say, I, I know, oh, but God is sovereign. But God, no, say, you say at any time. At Remember the woman with the issue of blood? At any time. Bible says, she said, she said, she said. And we saw last week, I thought I was going to go back there today. But we saw last week, Amplified Bible says, she kept on saying. Death and life are in the power of God. I mean, in the power of your tongue, child of God. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. What are you saying? Today, what have you said, really? And not, you know, what did you say by faith? What did you say? Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. Your mouth, your mind, and your manifestation. Or could say your mind, your mouth, and your manifestation. Mark 11, 23. For verily I say unto you, for whosoever will say to this mountain, this is not, oh, by the grace of God, I just hope the mountain will move. Hey, I'm waiting on God. No, this is Jesus speaking right here. All right, for surely I say to you, whosoever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the thing he says will come. No, no, no I mean, he will have, this is, this is, this, you need to be bold to do this. You need to be bold to do this. This, this is not, I hope so. This is not, do you understand? And I've explained the whole, um, um, by the grace of God and how we could use it better. Use it in faith. Use it in boldness. You Use your faith. Use, use your faith. Be aggressive about this thing. All right. And please notice Mark eleven twenty three did not add, if God wills. Please notice. Let's, let's see the verse. For assuredly, I say to you, Whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Let's read one more time, please. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast. It's a command. So if there any 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 sickness around you, any pain in your home, you want to use some Tylenol or something, please do, but don't end there and keep checking. Are you better? No, you're, you're not better. Let's check again. Are you better? Are, you, you, you want to enter the spirit, come to the flesh. Enter the spirit. Is it wrong to show care? No. Show your care, zero your faith. You, be, you, you, you on your own find out how to work the balance. All right? You have to find out how to work the balance. But say to the mountain, say to the mountain, if you have to lay by hand on that place several times, it's fine. Jesus laid hands on a blind man twice and he wasn't out of doubt. It was that man, we, that thing has to show up now. That thing needs to go now. You're aggressive, you're aggressive. If it's pain, don't play with it. I beg you, if it's sickness around your kid, your, don't, don't play with it. You say, well, I've been to the doctor. The doctor said, God forbid, but someday, you know, they also say some funny things that become horrible, all right? And we don't want to put our lives on them. We don't want to put, you know, uh, the woman with your blood, she did see the doctors, but then they couldn't help her. And there are cases where they can't help. So we should have learned to build our faith up until then, all right? I mean, we should, we should learn to build our faith so that when the time comes, if need be, all right? We can stand and then we're aggressive and then we know what to do. Do you understand that? So Mark eleven twenty three 23 gives you the right to speak to mountains, to speak to your 2022, to speak to circumstances, to speak death and life are in the power of, of your tongue. Um, please, in case I say anything, you need clarification or you might um, just um, drop a question in the chat box and I'll, I'll be glad to answer it. But well, please, we've got to be bold. 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 You can determine your manifestation. And that's what we're learning. All right, that's what we're learning. Okay, um, let's see. Let's throw in Proverbs 4 and just swing it in and talk about gates. So there are gates. There are gates. Your eye gate, Proverbs 420, please. Your eye gate, your ear gate, and then your mouth gate. The cord gate is inside you, your heart gate. But the doors to the heart gate, which is a final gate, the doors there, eyes, ears, mouth. Eyes, ears, 
mouth. Did you get that? My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear. If it comes by hearing, incline your ear to my saying. Let's go 21. All right. So one gate is mentioned here. It says, do not let them depart from your eyes. These are not physical eyes. You, you can't walk about town, you know, with the Bible in front of you. You can't be driving the Bible in front of you. But words form pictures. So you read the verse, but then you picture the verse. You keep meditating. So it says, do, incline your ear to my saying, don't let it depart from your eyes. And then we've seen before now, Joshua 1, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So the mouth... What the mouth says, the ears will hear. What the mouth says, the eyes will picture. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How are they kept in your heart? Your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Your eyes, your ears, your mouth. How are they kept in your heart? How do they enter? The entrance of the word gives light. How do they enter? Reading your Bible every day does not mean it has entered. Saying every Sunday service, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I do in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Does not mean anybody got a hint of whatever they said. It is a deliberate attempt at meditation that makes the thing to get written on your heart. It's a deliberate attempt at meditation or when you're in an environment of the word and there's revelation granted to you. There are many verses we quote that you and I will agree that those verses are just as good as saying twinkle, twinkle, little star. They don't have any impact. So you could say, well, I read, and, and, and I need to quickly say this. I know you might have maybe like a Bible reading plan or something, but why are you trying to finish those verses you have for the day? If the Holy Ghost says, stop at verse three, I beg you, stop at verse three. No, I got to finish. I'm supposed to read, stop at verse three. Stop at verse three. If the Holy Ghost says, stop, stop. He's the one... <laughs> I mean, you're reading the Bible to know him more and to receive impartations from him more. So the brag is not, oh, I, I finished, you know, 10, 10 chapters. It's, I gained the revelation. If it says, stop at verse 10, I want you to stay on, that ver on these five verses for the next four days. Pause your plan or, well, read your plan. There's still a lot of times you can still read your plan, but stay on those five verses. He wants to show you something. You want to milk something from there. And so we have a lot of people who know verses, but there's no life. There's no juice. Do not let them depart from your eyes. All right, got to read around up now. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How do they get to your heart? Eyes and ears and mouth. Eyes, ears, mouth. Eyes, ears, mouth. You keep doing that. Eyes, ears, mouth. Eyes, ears, mouth. Do you understand? All right, next verse. 22. Thank you, Lord. And I love 22. Verse, verse 22, please. All right, watch this. For they are life to those that find them, not life to those that read them. For they are life to those who find, to find. Find means I was making an attempt. I was loading up. I was talking the word. I was eyes, ears, heart, eyes, boom. Did you get that? They are life to those that find them health to all their flesh. That means Bible verses can bring you healing. If you apply them correctly, we're still going to talk this series, maybe two more weeks. But let's see how it goes. They are life to those who find them, health to all their flesh. We're going to end with um, the next verse, 23. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 23. Okay, there's some in the chat room. All right, great, great, great. All right. Watch this now. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of heat spring the issues of life. This is one of the biggest verses all over scripture because it connects even in the New Testament. The heart is the formation center. Whatever you allow to form in your heart affects your life. Your heart is your garden. Your heart is your ground. So you guard your heart. If watching media too much allows there to be fear, stop the thing, all right? Allow me, just take a few minutes. Stop, stop, stop feeding fear and say, I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid, oh Jesus, protect then you keep opening your doors to the fear, all right? If it's jealousy, cut the door. If it's envy, cut the door. If it's strife, cut, keep, cut. You, you guard the heart. Why? From your heart to flow the issues of life. I believe what you want to flow from your heart to be prosperity and healing and goodwill and favor. The, the force field, the things that will bless and, you know, keep you and, and wisdom. And that's what you want to flow. So don't let anything disturb the flow of your waters. Don't, don't do that. Guard your heart. Guard your thoughts. So I'll, I'm going to end on this. What would you love your life to look like? 
There are scriptures that will paint the picture. What I preach tonight, I'm sure you heard it before. I'm sure you know it. Issue might therefore be, are we applying it as much as we should? Are you talking the word aggressively? Are you taking authority over things? Are you speaking to, you know, to your life and saying the name of Jesus, I'm moving forward, I'm going forward, I'm moving forward, I'm going forward. Are, are you doing that? Are you all right? Are you doing that? I want you to please watch the previous video. Um, it's, it's on YouTube. The link on YouTube has been dropped in the chat room there. Please watch the video of Mind, Mouth, Mind Physician. And let's, let's keep growing on this together, all right? Let's keep growing on this together. So we're going to end on Mark 11, 23. We'll do like a confession from Mark 11, 23. Is that fine? Mark 11, 23. All right. So I keep my heart. I keep my heart. I keep my heart. I keep my heart. But Mark 11, 23, we're going to end with Mark 11, 23. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. For assuredly, I say to you, let's read together, please. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the thing he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. One more time, all right? For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the thing he says will come to pass, you will have whatever he says, all right? So I'll end by saying, I have whatever I say. I will 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 have whatever I say. All right. Now you could pick this verse and say till Sunday morning. One verse. What are you doing? Eye gate, hear gate, mouth gate. You're sending it on your way to your heart to build that confidence in. I'm going to say some things and they're going to happen. I'm going to have it. No matter how long it's going to take, I'm going to say it. it's going to happen. Do you understand that? I have whatever I say. I'll say it to the mountain, it will be moved and it has to be moved. I'll believe in my heart. I'll not doubt. I'm Jesus said, I'll have what I say. And watch this. Jesus said, you will have what you say. If you don't get what you said, it means he didn't get what you said. Do you understand? He said, you're going to have what you say. Jesus said, you will have what you say. So if you say it and you don't get it, then Jesus won't get what he said. And what he said was, you're going to get what you said. So you have to get what you said so that he can get what he said. Because what he said was, you will get, I you getting that? <laughs> Jesus said, you will have what you say. So whatever Jesus says has come to pass, right? And Jesus said, you will have what you say. So that has to happen. You have to say it and it comes to pass so that Jesus too, we we'll say, yeah, I said you would get it, right? Wouldn't you? you you're going to get it. So I have what I say, all right? So praise God. Amen. Um, nobody dropped any question. Um, since you're great. Um, but if you do have a question, as you think about this, maybe um, I hope you were not shy or something. If you do have a question, please reach out. Um, reach out, okay? I know you all know how to reach out. So, so you just reach out. Okay, praise God. And thank you for joining. Spend six minutes ahead of time or beyond the time. But thank you. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. So Sunday service, 9 a.m. Last Sunday was great. Last Sunday was great, great, great. This Sunday will be like super awesome, amazing. Um, feel free. If you have anybody you can tell, you know, share. Uh, we're working on something, so we should be able to have the audio, um, at least audio for now, uploaded on YouTube after service. Audio, um, at least you hear the message, and I think that's most important part. So, yeah, so those um, not in town, you'll still be able to get this. But this teaching is awesome, really like awesome. All right. And then um, interact details. If you want to give, I'm sure all of us have it. It's just giving at slcc.ca um, as, as you're led, as you're, as you decide in your heart, just okay, I'm going to give. So please feel free. Um, I don't share with you from saying that because someone might still think, oh, should I, should I? And then Holy Ghost saying do. So please obey, obey, obey God. So please go ahead and feel free. To do that praise god but this teaching don't don't miss it for any reason all right praise god amen thank you guys um have a very beautiful evening and we can all right yeah yeah bye praise god hallelujah thank you lord